If your edits end up being completely out of frame because of all the movement in your clips, you have to start using a face tracker. And I'm not just saying that. It makes a huge difference. And by the end of this video, you will exactly know how you can turn your videos from looking like this into looking like this. So what are we waiting for? And when we now look at the clip that I'm going to use in this case, you can see that it's pretty out of frame. Obviously, because he's walking. And the way we're now going to change this is by adding a tracker. So go to the right side and open up your tracker panel. If you can't see this, just head to the top under window and enable the check mark next to tracker. Now select the clip that you want to track. And in this case, we're going to use stabilize motion because obviously we want to stabilize the face of our character to always be in the center of our screen. Click this button once. And as you can see, it now opened up the whole layer and we have these two little frames. We're going to start by just dragging them a bit bigger. And once that's done, just zoom out. And we're now going to have to choose what of our character we want to track. In my case, like I said, I want to track his face. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this onto his face. Zoom in a bit and make sure it's nice and centered. Now, I always put my tracker onto the nose of the character because, for example, if you put it on his mouth and he starts speaking, obviously the tracker will be affected. Same with the eyes. So I will just use the nose. Now, generally speaking, the bigger the tracker is, the more accurate it's going to be, but also the longer it's going to take. So if you have a good PC, don't be afraid to make it a bit bigger. But if you're running on low specs, I would keep it small. In my case, I'm going to choose this size for my squares. And now we're going to head to the right under our tracker panel again and click on options once. As you can see, it now opened up this extra window. And the only thing we want to change in here is put this setting right here to stop tracking. Because if you leave this setting at a depth feature, it's basically every time it loses track of the character's nose, it will just start scanning the surroundings for the character's nose and then completely drift off the actual object you want to track. So instead, just click stop tracking and every time it's unsure, it will just stop. Now press OK. Make sure we only have the checkbox next to position. And once that's done, click this play button under analyze. Now, as mentioned before, analyzing the clip will take a while. And once it's done tracking, don't worry, this is not the parabola. This just showcases the tracker's position for each frame. And now because it finished analyzing, we can apply it to our clip. To do that, just head back to the tracker panel and hit apply. Now this extra window should open up and here you have the option between X and Y, X only and Y only. I'm going to choose X and Y because I want my tracker to be applied in both dimensions, meaning horizontally and vertically. Though if you only want it to be applied in a single dimension, feel free to choose that. And now very important, if you haven't already, head to the left and enable these two little boxes. The first one is going to be frame blending, hit that twice. And the second one is going to be motion blur, hit that once. And now what frame blending does, it basically allows your frames to bend together way smoother, which will just make your results way better. And now once that's done and you play your clip, you can see that there's like these ugly black bars, which you obviously don't want. Now there's different ways of removing them. To do that, click onto your layer, press S on your keyboard and it should bring up the scaling. Now just increase it till you can't see the black bars anymore. After this, you can see it already looks pretty good. But if your character now is very close to the camera, this will definitely not work. So instead, you can add an effect that's called motion tile. So go to your effects and presets panel and search for motion tile, drag it onto the layer and now just put the output height to 250. Enable this little check mark that says mirror edges and as you can see, it kind of removes the edges. This is ideal to use if there's only small little black bars. But as you can see, mine are way bigger, so it looks kind of odd. And now the last method there is, is using positioning keyframes. So we'll just create a keyframe every time the clip moves, and then adjust it till there's no black bars. Let me show you. Go onto your clip and press P on your keyboard. Now set a keyframe right before the black bars appear. Scroll ahead on your timeline till they're at their peak position, which is about here. And now just increase or decrease the Y value till there's no more black bars. So I'm roughly gonna put it to 900. And now do this for every time your clip moves out of frame. And again, if you now play it, you can see that there's no more black bars. And now obviously, because we want our clip to look like this, the last and most important step is going to be adding a good color correction. Because as you can see, adding a good color correction can increase the quality of your edits immensely. So click the first thing in the description to get 70% off of the ones you can see right here. And watch this tutorial if you want to learn how to do it yourself. Also check out my channel for more tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you next time.